So hey there guys, this is Minit Sylvester and welcome back to this Elixir programming language tutorial series. So in the previous videos, we have been writing Elixir scripts, compiling them in an IEX session and using the module from that particular file. So if you have been following my previous videos, uh, I'd say we are ready to take a step forward and start working using Elixir projects. So in this video, we'll be starting off with a new Elixir project called Books Inventory. So let me elaborate a little on our books inventory project. So the books inventory project that I'm going to create is basically a system which can be used to maintain an inventory or manage information of your personal collection of books. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a project called books inventory and then inside that we're going to create two tables called books and learnings. The books will have all the collection of fossil books that you have and we're going to associate it with another table called learnings where you keep track of what that book meant to you or what you learned from that book so this is what we're going to build and this video or this project might take a couple of videos so we'll see to create an elixir project open up a terminal and type in mix new the project name which in our case is books inventory so before you press enter let me tell you a little bit about mix so mix is a tool which is used to create elixir projects uh, run process in elixir projects so mix is to elixir what npm is to javascript and this command creates an elixir project where you can have multiple elixir files dependent on each other and treat it as a single project but we need a database and if you remember from one of my previous videos I said the database has to be supervised constantly for failures so we are going to need a supervisor module over here so to include that all you have to do is pass in the supervisor flag and then press enter and there we go we have created the project we have our project folder over here so I guess it's better if I open it separately so there we go if you look at the structure there is a lib folder inside which there's a books inventory folder and there's an application.tx so here you have the supervisor module starting so it does not have the database yet as an argument because we have to do some manual configuration for that but uh, this is uh, basically what you know starts a supervisor and then we have our books inventory file which is where we'll place our code so let's go ahead and start uh, to set up a database in our project in order to add a database we need to add a couple of dependencies to our project so in your mix file Come to the bottom where the depths function is defined and now we need to add a dependency so the first one is ecto sql and we want it to be the latest version so we'll say 3.0 and the next thing we're going to add is postgrex so i'm assuming you've already install PostgreSQL if you're not you will have to install it to run this project so for this we need anything greater than zero so it will just take up the latest version so once you do that open up your terminal and be sure you're inside the project directory and say mix depths.get which will fetch all your dependencies. So now all that's left to do is generate a repo. So let's say mix actor.gender repo fnr it's a flag and then you have to pass in the name so in our case it is going to be books inventory dot repo
so now our repo is created and there is a bit of a configuration to be done so in our config.exe we so the folder config is actually created when you run this command and inside that you have a config file so be sure to change the username and password to whatever you've set for your system so the default is postgres that is if you have not really set anything and in config file we are required to add these two lines so we'll do that and we can make it in one line or and then we have to add a repo to the supervision tree so I'll just copy paste this so everything is set up we should be good to go so let's generate our first migration files So migration files uh, are a way of telling Elixir project that a database is to be created and the configuration for that particular table we haven't created the database yet so for that we have to run the command mix create and if everything is done properly you will see this line the database for book inventory.repo has been created so the next step is creating a migration file so migration files are a way of telling uh, the Elixir project that a table has to be created in the database and the configuration for that particular table has to be returned in the migration file. So let's create one. So to create a migration file, this is the command you have to type in. So we see mix ectodogenerate migration and then the name of the migration file. So for me, it is going to be create book. So now once you go into the private folder inside repo and migrations, you find our migration file. So the configuration is the only thing that is to be filled. So I'm going to say create table. Books. Or let's say book. Do and then we have to add the fields. So the fields here are going to be, let's say, name of the book. I'm simply going to say name and then author. And we'll say, now we'll just add these two for now. So this should be okay. So let's try creating the table and for that you have to run the migration so the command for that is make sector dot migrate and when we do this if everything is good we should see the line migrated which means the table is created in the database so if you see these statements it means that your table was created successfully but the application still does not know anything about this table so to make it know about this table we have to create a file and define a module for this particular table. So that has to be done under the lib folder in the books inventory where we have the application that actually starts the supervisor. So create a new file and name it after your table. So here it is book.ex. And now we have to define a module which starts, let me get rid of the terminal. So. So it starts with books inventory and then after the dot you have to put in the table name so and we have to instruct it to use ecto.schema so once that is done we have to make it aware of the fields in the table so 
the fields that are present for now are author which is a string and the other field is name which is also a string actually this should come first okay so this is done so we should be good to insert things into the table but before that we have to write in a bit of code so this is the main file the book inventory file so here is where we have to write our code so let's get rid of whatever is actually there and just to check that it's working you set our project rights let's say def start and let's just output hello so to run an elixir project navigate into the project directory and start an iex and load the project to load the project all you have to say is this thing or this folder has a mix file so when you do that the project will automatically be loaded so we should have the module books inventory yeah we do and we'll say start and we have hello so yeah our configuration is proper our application works so let's go ahead and you know add some books so so for now the only operation we have is adding a book so let's try that out now let's still build our script thinking of the future so So I'm going to follow a choice based mechanism. The choice I get. What do you No, let's just let the choice so add a book. And then I'm going to convert it to integer. It's much easier working with integer. So before that, let me say Malcolm, do you want to do? And let's give a second choice, which will be exact. We need an exit condition. So we have the choice. So you know me. The next thing is case statement. So if it's one, we'll say add a book. And then we'll call start again. If it's two, which is exit, we'll just say goodbye. Okay, so now we have to write that function and a book. So we need the book name and the author name. Okay, let's just give something. Adding a book. So we need the name. And we also need the author. So 
So once we have both of them, we can insert them into the database. So before that, I'm going to alias the module for the table. So that would go books inventory dot book. And we might also want to do that for repo. So I'm going to say book equals book and the name is going to be the name that is the one stored in the variable and the value for the key author is going to be author so all that's left to do now is insert them so case report insert of book So for now it is going to be okay. So when it's inserted successfully, we get a okay and the actor struct of what was inserted. So if that happens, we just say, all right, we need to give some message. So we'll say, by let's say added and it's added successfully so this should work and maybe if everything works out we'll just you know print out every book available so in order to get every entry from a table you use report or all function and you pass in the module for that particular table in our case it is book so i can keep using book because i have aliased it over here so if i did not i will have to use books inventory dot book everywhere i need book so aliasing saves time so once i have the entries that is just going to be a list so we can use the enum protocol on it and we have read a function now so let's say now let's call this books so for each book i'm just going to say i wrote but and actually let's just put this And we need an end. So to bring in a separation, let's put so this should do good. So let's try to start our application. You know, if you've done everything properly, this should work. If it's not how to fix it so let's say books inventory to start and your two options add a book exit so one adding a book enter the book name so what book do i say okay i'll say which dad for that the author is robert kiyoshi 
and yes the book is added which chat product was added successfully the books in your database are there's only one book and it is listed so fantastic now i'm going to say exit so now we can insert a book but there's no actual validation as to what is being entered you know for now as you know we can just enter an empty value and still the database will accept it so this needs to be fixed so in order to do that we'll be using something called a chain set so change sets are actually modules which are built into ecto and they provide functionalities for validating the fields in the table so in order to apply those we have to go to the file that defines a table in our case it's book and here let's define a function called change set so the first parameter is going to be the struct that is to be inserted into the database and the second is parents in case it needs to be updated so by default parents will be an empty map And inside this, we need to perform a little operation on box. So we'll say ecto dot change set dot cast. So cast is a function which is used to specify which value is to be inserted into the table. So there might be a lot of parents, but cast ensures that only the parents that are mentioned here are inserted into the table so in this case it's just name and author and then to validate the presence of value that they're not empty we use the function validate required and we don't really need this Oops. So all we have to do is name and author. So now with that change set function defined, let's go ahead and test this on our entry. So to apply this, uh, when we enter values into the table, let's move on to our books inventory file and let's make use of this change set function. So I'm going to declare a variable called change set and now that my data to be entered is defined over here I need to get it validated using the change set function which is defined in this module the book inventory dot book module so I've already set an alias for book so I can just say book so book dot change set so the first parameter is going to be this and then let's get rid of this I'm not really updating anything so it's going to be an empty map and then this time we have to insert the chain set because it holds the proper valid struct so just to take a look at how this works let's not write a case for this let's just try running this So I'm using the stat function. So I'm entering out a book and I'm not giving it any value. And as you can see, it is being validated. So it's saying can't be blank. Name can't be blank and the author also can be blank. And it also gives an acknowledgement as to why this is an error. So now we have to write a, a case for this too. So if it is an error and we can say a struct, let's say we don't really have to care what this is. We can just say, you know, please fill in proper values.
and then we can call this function add a book again so let's try that now okay so start and i'm adding a book so let's not enter anything and it says please fill in proper values okay so it says enter book name so this time i'll just say crushing it and i think the author is gary i don't know his full name so i'll just put gary and yes so we have all these values so this was previously just me putting in some values to test so now we can add books we have validation that's fantastic so now what i'm planning to do is i also want to keep track of whether i have finished reading the book or not so for that we can use another column indicating whether i have finished the book or i have not so that could be a boolean value so we have to add that column so to add a column to existing table we have to generate a migration file again so i'm going to use the command used for generating migration files and i'm going to name it add finished to book and my migration file is created so i need to configure this now so this time the table already exists so we're going to say alter table and the table name is book and we have to add a column called complete it and it's going to be a boolean field so now let's run this migration so if we did configure properly we'll see yeah we'll see this statement it says migrated so that is done but still we have to update the application about the new field so let's go over here and let's add this field in the default i'm going to say false yeah so that should do and you have to inform over here too that it is required so so that is done and i'm not really going to validate because there is going to be some value it's either false or true if nothing is given it will by default take it as false so let's go back to our main file and let's again ask the user if he is finished reading have you finished reading name And let's get rid of the training new line character so we also have to make some sense so I'm going to say answer as yes or no so once that is there we need to a beta field over here to so so for the key finished, I'm just going to say finished 
equal to equal to yes so this is actually a comparison operator so if the value given by user is a yes then it is going to be true the value of this key will be set to true otherwise it will be false so maybe add a new book again let's see how this works okay so okay so i'm adding a book so this time i'm going to say help by and have you finished this yes i have finished reading this book so there is a error so okay so it is completed we need to change this over here so this is bad okay never mind we can fix it let's go back and let's change this to completed yeah so this should do fine so let's run this project again Yes, I have. And yes, now we get a list of all our books. So when we list all these books, you know, let's try. Also seeing if they are completed. So that will do. So maybe we could make this a separate function actually. Okay, so let's try that. And all we have to do is And now here, I just have to call this function. Yeah, so that will do fine. So now I have to provide a method where they can, you know, update their reading status. So they can change it from true to false. So I'm just going to say update reading status and this is again going to be list books i'm going to say i wrote yet enter the number okay so i'm not listing the id so i'll do that too
No, not here. So that will do fine. So corresponding to the book you want to update. Yes, so since that is done, all I have to do is I'm going to use a get function to so we need to get this inside a variable. I'm just going to call it ID. So ID. So once I do get that, so book, and then there is going to be parent in this case, which is completed. Which will again, we might have to ask this question again. So have you finished reading? In this case, it'll be book not name. Yes, yeah, so let's name this chain set. Then all we have to do is copy this exact thing and instead of insert, it becomes update. So let's, you know, add this functionality and a choice. So I'm going to say two is date reading status and then start and three will be set. So we need to update this. So let's try running our project, you know, we might have to keep our eyes open for errors. Yeah, so I'm going to say so update reading status. So yeah, crushing it. Now I have to enter the number. So re have you finished reading crushing it yes i have so i want to update the status so it's updated and now you can see completed is true so we can update it now that's fine so for now let's just exit a wrap and then we might also have to provide an option where we want to delete this stuff so let's add another function for that. So we'll say def delete book. And this is again going to be list. So this is practically the same up to over here.
you know, we can again make this a completely different function. Oh, you know, we can try this later for now. Let's just get this done. So, so once you do have the book, you have to delete it. So, report delete book. Yep, so this is going to be another option. So that is what three will be now. Delete book and then I'll start again. And now four will be exit. Okay, so we should be set. Let's try running this. And yeah, so let's call the start function. I want to delete a book, so I want to delete the second one. It was a mistake. Yep, it's deleted. So our delete module 2 works. So great, I'm going to exit for now. So, so this is where I'm going to stop for now. So the rest of it will continue it in the next video. So what's left to do is create the learning stable and associated with the books. So yeah, we'll do it in the next video. And if possible, we'll also create another table called wish list and put the books that we'd like to buy in the future. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you feel like seeing something, you know, even if it's like corrections that I should make in my speaking or anything in my video. So please feel free to comment and let me know. So this is Minutes Silvestre signing off. Until next time, keep coding.